And now let's talk about hydrates. A hydrate is a compound that has a specific number of water molecules within its solid structure. For example, in its normal state, we have copper to sulfate has five water molecules associated with it. So it means there are five water molecules combined with copper to sulfate. We have the systematic name of it, copper to sulfate pentahydrate, with a chemical formula of copper or CuSO4 combined with five molecules of H2O. So we have some other hydrates. We have BaCl2 with two molecules of water, or also known as barium chloride, dihydrate. We have the LiCl, okay, H combined with H1H2O. So we have lithium chloride, monohydrate. We have also magnesium sulfate or the heptahydrate. Hydrate. And we have the SRNO32 with four molecules of water or also known as strontium nitrate. Butahydrate. Okay. So, when the water molecules are driven off by heating, the resulting compound, the CuSO4, is sometimes called anhydrous copper to sulfate. Okay, so, when we talk about anhydrous, it means the word means the compound no longer has the water molecules associated with it because of the evaporation. So we have here some systematic name, okay? So systematic name and common names of some familiar inorganic compounds. We have the chemical formula of water, which is the common name, and the systematic name is dihydrogen monoxide, okay? That is based on the present atoms of the elements in a certain compound. For example, we have dihydrogen, we have two hydrogen atoms, and we have also one oxygen atom, so that's why you have here monoxide. We have also here ammonia, NH3, with a systematic name of trihydrogen nitride. We have also dry ice, or also known as CO2. We have here the solid carbon dioxide. We have the salt, or also known as NaCl. We have with the systematic name of sodium chloride. We have the N2 and also known as the nitrous oxide or laughing gas. The dinitrogen monoxide, the systematic name. The CaCl3, also known as marble chalk or limestone or also known as calcium carbonate. The NHCO3 or also known as baking soda or sodium hydrogen carbonate. And we have the MgSO4 with seven molecules of water, or also known as Epsom salt, or also known as the magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. So we have here the magnesium sulfate, and take note, we have seven molecules of water, so that's why you have there heptahydrate. Okay, and we have the MgOH. Two, or also known as the milk of magnesia, with a systematic name of magnesium hydroxide. So we have here some colors. Colors represent a certain element. So just like hydrogen, the color of hydrogen is white. We have wooden, pink, carbon, black. We have nitrogen, we have blue, oxygen, red, fluorine, yellow, green, um, sodium, gray, phosphorus, orange, sulfur, yellow, chlorine, green, 
bromine red and iodine is violet. So, take note, in making a certain structure, you are going to use those different colors as indicator of a certain element. So, we have a chemical formula denotes the composition of the substance. So, the chemical formula, you can see the ratio of element okay, in a certain compound. So, here we have the molecular structure, or the molecular formula, shows the exact number of atoms of each element in a molecule. For example, we have H2O. H2O, that is the molecular formula of water. Some elements have two or more distinct forms, known as the allotropes. For example, oxygen. Oxygen atom has two possible forms. We have the oxygen itself and we have the ozone. Oxygen has the chemical formula of O2 and ozone is O3. And they are called as the allotropes of oxygen. Because again, it forms two or more distinct structure. So we have here the structural formula. It shows not only the elemental composition, but also the general arrangement. Okay, the angle, the distance from a certain um, element to another element. Okay, so that is the structural formula. Next is the empirical formulas. Take note, the molecular substance can also be represented using the empirical formula or also known as the simplest form of the molecular structure. You are just going to find the whole number ratio of the element, the simplest. While the molecular formula, formulas tell us the number of atoms, the true formula, while well, the empirical formula gives the, the simplest formula. We have an example, N to H4. So, that is the molecular formula. So you need to get the empirical formula by getting its simplest formula. So you have NH2. So you only need to do is to get the common denominator of the N2H4 since all the whole number in the N2H4 is divisible by 2. So the result is NH2. Take note that the molecular formula and empirical formulas are often the same, sometimes, just like H2O. So, molecular is H2O, empirical is H2O. We have also the hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, uh, they are divisible by 2, so that's why you have HO. For ethane, okay, the, C, the C2H6, so the empirical formula now is CH3 because it is divisible by 2. We have propane. C3H8. So C3H8. So they have just the same molecular formula and empirical formula with um, water. Okay, same condition. We have also the acetylene. The C2H2. The empirical formula CH. The benzene the C6H6 or the empirical formula is CH because they are divisible by 6. Always take note that in naming molecular compounds, remember that binary molecules compounds are substances that consist of just two different elements. We have here the nomenclature and how you are going to name the different um, compounds. First, the first element that appears in the formula. Name the second element that appears in the formula, changing its ending to IDE. Example, we have HCl, or also known as hydrogen chloride. So you are going to name first the first element appears in the formula, followed by the second element, and change that into change the suffix to IDE. So 